Rappin' with Reef Bum is sponsored by Polo Reef, Champion Lighting and Supply, and Reef and Bid. So uh, uh, you, in your experience, because you're running Toro Farm, a successful one, so uh, if uh, you only, uh, the, what is the most important, like the top five or top 10 uh, trades that you actually will focus on first? I focus on um, iron, manganese, cobalt, vanadium, and, um, and copper. They're the That's ones that I make idea. sure always in in the correct ranges. Mm -hmm. um, mainly, what I see in uh, vanadium's on, uh, up there as well. It's not. I don't think vanadium's as you know. It, it's it, it's not. I can't replace vanadium with copper or copper with vanadium um, because I have I have noticed differences. I can tell in my uh, system. That I keep the majority of my ganes, and I can tell when my magne manganese is low and when my and my when my vanadium is low. One, it's, it's, it's always both of them at the same time. I've always had deficiencies in both of them at the same time. Very rarely does vanadium show up in manganese, um, not show up or vice versa. Um, I don't understand that. Um, it's way beyond, you know, I guess the, it, it's part of the unknowns that we might not ever understand. But when my ganeopores aren't polyped out like they are when those levels are present mm -hmm. um, and I see that they're retracted, um, I can go and, you know, dose some vanadium and some manganese and within 24 hours, the polyp extension is right back to where it used to, where, where it should be. Hmm. That's pretty cool to see. I mean, you know, you, you don't believe it until you actually see it, but, um, you know, th that's probably something most people are like, yeah, that's a bunch of BS, but until you experience it, you know, uh, just from my experience, I can't, I'm not saying something that I haven't experienced on my own. And um, people that I've also talked to about, uh, you know, specific species like Ganyaporas, and they say they have no, you know, polyp extension is not as good as it used to be. And um, when they do a water change, it seems to get better for a day, and then it seems mm -hmm. to go back down. I say, well, dose vanadium and dose manganese. Actually, dose minor and traces in general, and you'll see them, you know, really be happy. And um, so that's that's so, what I say. Um, My favorites. Uh, do, do you see that um, the Ghani's color change after you dose uh, manganese? I haven't noticed any color change. Oh. Um, the Ghani's that we have growing on the farm, they don't shift in color at all. The only time I see them shift in color is if I take fragments and put them directly under mm -hmm. a metal head, and then I seem to get much more vibrant colors out of them than if they're just under the T5s. Metal um, halides, huh? He said it. He used the dirty <laughs> words. <laughs> you will not. That's, an, that's metal, another show. Look better than a metal hay life. <laughs> I told you you could not keep him off of. <laughs> so, for matter of fact, that I um, I have um, on my in my hand, and then this is a review article published in 2023. It basically reviewed it like over 200 or probably more of paper ever published about uh, trace metals. Uh, in terms of how they function in coral, which I think is a wonderful uh, piece of review paper. Uh, <clears throat> also, they found out something is a coincidence. Actually, maybe it's not really a coincidence. So uh, in good. my hand, uh, this is a Chris uh, Wood's uh, isolated MT. So uh, the funny thing is I look at this paper. I look at the label of this thing. So besides the iodine, uh, of course, that the iodine is not a metal. And this, well, I, 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 this is not commercial, okay? I, I just, just want to find as a curiosity of as a scientist. It's a, it's a, it's uh, a hell of a coincidence. That's all you're it's saying. It's a hell of a coincidence. Is that there's not one more, <laughs> not one less about all the critical metal that is well documented in the paper. Hundred percent hit, hit rate. Yeah. So that's why I'm gonna try this. So I'm not <laughs> a trace element doser, okay? So um, I've been. Um, Trying out uh, uh, iron and manganese 
well, just uh, put some in that kind of thing. Um, mostly is for that big red garnet that kids gave me. <laughs> That's what it is for. Um, so uh, before I found this uh, research paper, what I, my observation of that garnet that actually is uh, probably is the only large garnet economy I have. So I'm an SPS guy. <laughs> so me too. Yeah. <laughs> me too. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, that garnet uh, always have a great polyp extension, and that is because uh, I use tap water. Well, God forbid. Oh, well, well, don't duplicate that because that the water, my tap water is unique because that is produced by our tongue, and the water source is very good. So that's why. Um, but don't try tap water. You, so you got else. some magical yeah. tap water there, huh, Dong? Oh, actually, yeah, it is because <laughs> in our tap water, uh, the two elements stands out. Actually, it's naturally occurring. It's iron and manganese. Mm. <laughs> really? Nice. Yes. That's yes. that's pretty common in a lot of in a lot of yeah, groundwater. Yeah, in New England. Yeah. 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 yeah so, ex um, exactly. Yeah, in New England. And mm -hmm. also that I got uh, two ppm of fluoride. <laughs> oh wow! Yeah. Nice. Wow. Yeah. So uh, two ppm of fluoride. But yeah. that's because the town put that in there. Yeah, the town put them in there. But, but uh, yeah, so that uh, that's why that uh, I, I do quite a bit of water change. And I think that I, I'm pretty okay. Yeah, 2 it's p.m. Fine. Yes. It's it's a little yeah. higher oh, than seawater. Yeah, 1.292-ish. 1.292, yep. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 So Thereabouts. 2 is just approximately about that that range. So, um, <clears throat> so that... Um, um, I also do a little bit of more iron and manganese. So just uh, try a little bit in the past several months and try to, try to see if I can uh, yeah, try to see the response for that big uh, cheese scani pora. When I add a little bit of uh, manganese and iron uh, into that tank just for that garni, uh, one thing that I see is that uh, because I already have some uh, iron and manganese in the water to begin with, the, the addition a little bit more is just uh, icing on the cake. So what I found out is that, yeah, the polyp extension is just slightly better, but it's not significant, but the color of that garni turned to deep red. It come, come from uh, more like on the pinkish red side. Right now, it's really vibrantly red. So, uh, and also in this paper, it definitely talk about how the vanadium and uh, manganese, how, how they affect the biological pathway. So mm. that thing is real. So yeah, it, it's, it's not no longer uh, uh, some observation um, antidote uh, of uh, observation, but actually there's a scientific uh, background, scientific rationale behind it. That's why I'm, I'm getting this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what I started with. Right. Yeah. I mean, when, when we first, when you and I first put our heads together and you started using that in the farm, I remember Turf. vividly you telling me about the rate of increase of, uh, of growth that you were getting mm -hmm. in some of this stuff. And, and it was significant, not right. just significant in terms of the rate of growth, but the number of corals that it was, was significant. It, it was, I, it was, it was amazing because, um, we started using algae scrubbers about six months prior to no, it was about a year, about a year, because yeah, you you came back into the scene in 2020, and I had scrubbers on the system for over a year, and I was pulling my hair out trying to find a uh, um, a minor and trace supplement that I could utilize instead of individually dosing each element, and um, I couldn't find one that was doing what I needed it to do, and that's why your first rendition of um, of MT was isolate turf MT. And it was for algae turf scrubbers because of the amount of depletion from your minor and trace elements come, that comes about by using an algae turf scrubber. Right. And um, I remember over a period of, I think, six or eight months, you and I were going back and forth because I was, you know, doing ICP tests on a weekly basis. And we were noticing that the turf MT was, was, was working, it was, but it was working too good. It was putting too much of certain elements into, the, into it. So, I remember you reformulated a handful of times and then you ended up with just isolate MT at the very end because, you know, it got to the point where it was a great additive for anybody to utilize, even if you're not using a turf scrubber. Right. And um, it's taken off since there. I mean, there were so many people that were jumped on board with the isolate MT when it first came available and it was finally, you know, when you finalized how you were going to formulate it. And um, 
yeah, I mean, isolate MT has been the basis of our solution that we dose in all of our systems for the first three years of dosing uh, minor and trace elements on a, you know, actually, no, I didn't even put it on a dosing pump until three years into it. And we've been doing it for five years now. And it took till about three years of me finally feeling comfortable and putting the concoction together and um, dosing it 24 seven for 30 days. And then ICP rebooting it and changing the formulation and chasing my minor and trace elements because I had this goal of becoming ionically balanced where all my elements were perfect. There was no elevations, no depletions. And I achieved it for about a month. And then right. I, I just chased it after that. And now I'm just happy with that last when I finally <laughs> achieved it. I don't chase my minor and chases anymore. And um, I just use the same formulation of the amount of minor and traces that I was putting in my concoction as I did from three years ago when I stopped trying to figure out how to dial it in a hundred percent, because I realized that it's a pipe dream. So, so a, couple, a couple of things, just, just quickly, you do this because you're growing coral and that's your business. And so you actually have to be using stuff that, that, that has an impact, a positive impact on your sure. outcome, you know? And so this is not just a matter of dosing elements into the system for the purpose of saying, yes, I know that I'm putting these things and I, I know they're important it's more of a matter of looking at the results and saying what I'm trying to achieve is an, some improvement in color intensity or, or in growth rate or both of those things, because both of those things are important to what you do. So from a practical perspective, you're putting it in there, not again to just say, I know they're going in there, but you're looking at the corals themselves and noticing if, I, if, if this is not going in there, this is the impact when I do exactly. put it in and I'm good about it, then I know this is what, this is, this was the difference. I started here and I ended up here after using this stuff, you know, so yes. it's, and, and I, this is not um, meant to, to come off as being any kind of a marketing thing. Cause it's not the critical thing is putting those elements in and actually seeing the, the, uh, the impact that they're having on the system. It, it doesn't matter what ratios you put in. MT just happens to be one that works really, really well, but those rates of depletion for all of those elements are nonlinear in every single system because of the difference in the corals that are there, the difference in the amount of dissolved organic That's material. I mean, everything, the filtration, you know, and on and on the biological makeup of the cohort within that system. It's an imperfect solution, but it's a solution that's perfect enough. Exactly. But the point is that you're actually seeing results by applying stuff like that. I, I think know, that, it, uh, it, that there, there is about uh, one research paper I found is that they study four different type of corals that uh, one is Acropora hyacinthus and then another one is uh, <laughs> uh, is a Posopora and then another one I think is a Paritis and plus one more is actually is a LPS. I, I forgot the name of it. So uh, they mapped the trace element consumption for all these all, uh, four different types of coral. They're dramatically different. They're just day and night. Yeah, they have right. the circle drawing, the barely any overlapping. Right. So each species of coral actually require, the, the trace uh, element require, requirement is so dramatically different. different. I, I don't think that, that we'll ever be able to find out a perfect solution so Never. that's why somewhere something that somewhere in between is yeah. good enough. That, that, exactly. that's, that's my, um, my yeah. take of it. A couple of comments. Uh, Salem, uh, Tapner, Salem, perfect is the enemy of good. Perfect, perfect is an amazing dream. Yep. And then uh, Charles is uh, saying, don't let perfect get in the way of good enough. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's very that's good, good enough. Yeah, exactly. Yeah.